Welcome to HackyEye.com. My name is Trenton, and this is the first of hopefully many screencasts and podcast episodes to come. Today we're going to be looking at file carving using Perl. File carving is one of those things that it's great to add to any forensics or data recovery toolkit. The whole goal of file carving is to look through a bunch of data and pull out a useful file. So say for example you have a thumb drive or a SD card for your camera that accidentally got formatted, although it had a bunch of pictures on it that you needed. Well, the data is still there, but you just don't have any way to access it. With file carving, we're going to search through a file and we're going to look for patterns and then attempt to pull those out and save the files in a way that we can then use once again. So to do this today, we're going to write what we call a block search program. We're going to look through blocks of information at a time and attempt to find um, a file signature. If you do a Google search for file signatures, this is one of the first sites that comes up. And I will go and reference this on hackya.com. But this is a list of file signatures. You'll often hear these referred to as the file's magic number. But as you can see, there are quite a few different files, all with their unique signature. So today we're going to be um, looking at JPEG files. So let's go ahead and look at the JPEG file signature here. You can see that the JPEG file signature starts with FFD8FF. And then it's going to proceed with another pattern that will be true in all, all cases. Now there's three different types of JPEG files listed here. So it's going to be one of these three signatures. But again, they all start with FFD8FF. And one of the things that's going to make file carving with JPEG images a little bit easier is that they also have a trailer signature. Um, and here you can see the trailer is FFD9. So if we can find this signature and then this trailer and then write everything from here to here to a file, we've got our JPEG image out as if nothing had ever happened to it and as if it never gotten lost in the first place. To make this just a little bit more clear, I'm going to go ahead and show you. I'm going to bring up a terminal here and we are going to use a tool called hex edit to look through some hex data. What I've done for this exercise is created an image file, and you can download this at hackyad.com if you want to follow along. Um, the Perl code is also there, so you can download that. It's heavily commented, so it should be easy to follow along with. But what I've done for this Perl-parse1.image is dumped a bunch of random data into a file. And then after I did that, I took two image files and hid them somewhere within that data. So let's go ahead and open this up in a hex edit tool and as you can see it just looks like a bunch of junk but let's go ahead and do a hex string search for our file signature of FFD8FF and as you can see down here at the bottom we have that match FFD8FF well, if we've got the uh, leading signature we're off we're likely to have the trailing signature so let's search for FFD9 there you, again you can see it so everything from where we just were to this point is all part of the JPEG. I said there was two files, so let's go ahead and do a search for the next one, FFD8FFs, and sure enough, there is another uh, file signature header. So, we're going to go ahead and begin to code and find a way to pull these out. I'm using Perl. Perl is an excellent scripting language when you need to parse files or look for certain signatures. It has an excellent Im excellent implementation of regular expressions and they're incredibly powerful. Powerful. If you haven't had a chance to look at them, I would highly encourage you to do so. Um, we'll look at them a little bit, but it's definitely worth um, doing a little bit more reading or research on. We're going to start our program out like any good Perl programmer with use warnings and use strict. We're going to take a argument from the command line or from the terminal um, with the file name that we want to use for our image. We're going to go ahead and place that file name into this variable in file. And then we're going to use that to open up our file um, in read only mode. And then we're going to create the file handle of in file. If that doesn't work, we're going to print out a message that says we can't find it or we can't access it. Next, we're going to go ahead and put it into binary mode. This just prevents um, the the program from interpreting certain characters, such as a new line, in particular ways. So whenever we're trying to look through for large strings of 
binary or hex data, it's best to put it in binary mode. Um, the next we're going to declare a variable of n, and we're just going to use this to hold the location that we currently are in in file as we search through it. That'll make a little bit more sense as we actually get to that part in code. The next variable, variable that is declared is data, and that's just used to hold information as we search from block to block to block or as we begin to write what we found into a file. And then the third variable that we've declared in this area is what we call our search block size and this is going to be the amount of data that we're going to search through at a time. Um, you might ask why don't we just search through the entire file at once? Well if we do that then it's going to be incredibly inefficient because it's going to have to look through the whole file for one match um, and if it finds it, it's going to continue on. So what we want to do is just look through a particular part for a match, and if we find that, then we're going to go ahead and move on to the next section of code. Um, so this is just more of an efficiency thing. We could put the whole whole file in at once, but it would um, not be nearly as efficient, especially when you get into bigger image files. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to create a while loop. And it's going to say while not end of file, and it's going to reference end file, and do the following code. And of course, when that's done, we're going to go ahead and close our file. So let's go ahead and expand this and look at what's inside while. The first command that's inside of this while loop is seek. And what this is going to do is it's going to go to position n. And the zero here means from the beginning. It's the whence value. So we're going to go to position zero, which is what we defined our n as earlier, from the beginning in in file. So this is basically just going to set us at the beginning of in file. Then after that we're going to read our search block size, so 512 bytes of data from in file, and then we're going to go ahead and place that in the data buffer, our data variable. Um, and then we can run whatever checks we need to run onto it, so we'll get back to this if in just a second. But then once that's done we're going to go ahead and say n is equal to n plus the search block size minus 15. And this is just going to go ahead and move our block up 512 bytes as a time at a time. So it's going to search through that 512 and then it's going to go ahead and move it up one. Now you might ask why is there that minus 15? Well signatures are usually no greater than 16 um, characters long and if you could think for a second of or 512 byte blocks moving down a pattern. Let's say, for example, that we have our two blocks and our pattern is right on the border of the two of those. Well, that might cause a problem and make us miss um, finding that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and overlap our two 512 blocks a little bit with the hopes that if our pattern was somewhere on the border, we're going to go ahead and catch it. So it's going to go ahead and run through that, moving the blocks down the code at a time each time checking for a particular pattern match. So let's look at that. It's going to say if, and then we're going to run this regex expression, if somewhere in data we find a match to this particular string, then we're going to get run to the subfunction called get jpeg. Um, so let's go ahead and look at what this reg regex expression does. It looks pretty complicated, but really it's fairly straightforward. If you remember from earlier, the start of our signature was FFD8FF. -F. So the first part that we're going to try to look for in our match is the hex character FFD8FF. -F. And then after that, one of the next value is going to be one of either E0, E1, or E8. So we're going to make E0, and then we're going to say OR, E1, OR, E8. And then we're going to say that there's only going to be one of those used next two characters, if you remember back from um, the, the template that we looked at, it had two, two uh, values that each were x, x. That just basically means that we don't know what they're going to be. They could be, they could be a few different things. So we're going to go ahead and just define them as any character. That's what these two dots are for. And then we're going to go ahead and proceed throughout the rest of the pattern, saying that for the next character it's going to be either 45, 4a, or 5-3. And it's going to only, that character is only going to occur once, and so we're going to do that until we end up getting all the way through our pattern. Now if that's matched, it's going to go ahead and jump to the get JPEG um, subroutine. 
So let's go ahead and go down to our git jpeg subroutine and expand this. 